Good afternoon, good evening, good evening, good evening. Yes, it is the favorite day of the week. Somebody said already Friday, Friday, no, it's Tuesday. This is Bible study time. And I know that you all are already, have have already gotten yourself ready. I already know. How do I know? Because we do this every week. Either way, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm going to just take a little time here just to say thank you, Lord. For everything that's that's even happened on today. Uh, just had a little mishap with my truck. But guess what? That's all good. Got it already prepared. I got a couple spare parts. I'm going to take that and do what, what needs to be done. And going to keep on rolling. But either way, God is good. Um, You know, today is I, it's so much going on. And, and, and I know, I know, I know, I know if you spend... If you, Spent any time on the news, uh, you see the different attacks on the body, the body of Christ. Um, that's supposed to happen. The attacks that come into many people in the body of Christ, that is supposed to happen. If there was never any attacks, you have to wonder which body are you in. Um, if you're in the body of Christ, the world hates us. They hate us because, for one, they know we can't be defeated. Um, when you look at the spiritual realm, the spiritual realm, the devil knows, the demons know that we cannot be defeated. Um, the only way we can come out of safety is if we choose to walk out of safety. We choose to walk out of the body of Christ. We choose to accept curses. We choose to accept uh, diagnosis. We choose to um, just maneuver out of God's hand. Um, if anybody has ever been been grabbed real tight in the physical, say a bad hug, um, you have to wiggle and wiggle and on purpose get out of God's hands. Uh, you have to on purpose get out of that person's hands. Um, well, it's the same thing. Thank you, Lord, that God doesn't so easily let go. Um, you know, he, he is a gentleman and he will allow you to go out there and hang yourself. Um, but. He has so many steps that will keep you or check you to make you come back home. I got to think about the prodigal son. You know, you, you know the story of the prodigal son. The entire time, God still had his hand on his life. So when I think about um, going back to what we were just talking about, the body of Christ being under attack, you know, the devil likes to try to use those closest to him, uh, to you, to try to get you off balance. But I say to you again, that's just him working. Uh, that's just him attempting to do something. But when you have Jesus on the inside, he promised us the victory. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care what it looks like. We have the victory. And if you if we learn to relax in God, we'll see the victory on this side. And we already know we've been promised on the victory on the other side. See, God has our name attached. Well, he has his name attached to us. Jesus Christ's blood is on us. So he's not going to let us fall. Um, he will allow us to go through situations and temptations and, you know, circumstances just because to show himself strong. What does that mean? Uh, so that as you're going through your storm, he's going to allow you to be under heavy pressure just so all eyes can be on you. But what happens is, while all eyes are on you, if you stay connected to the Lord, he will give you the victory out of it. He will bring the things to you. I don't care how many walls has been brought up by the enemy. I don't care how many situations. What will happen is God will make it look like they're winning just so more of them can come. Just so more of the nosy people can come. Just so more people can follow your situation. And then at the last second sometime, at the last minute sometime, he will bust out with a victory. Well, guess what? If that's happening in your life, understand that's on purpose. That's how God, see, and we're going to go into that tonight, matter of fact. You know, I don't prepare anything no more than just reading the scripture. And, and, and God gives me the scripture. I read it. And whatever comes out when record is hit this is from god trust me i have no notes i don't try to prepare anything like that i don't want to do it that way so anyway um i'll just say to you understand that the battle 
It's already won. It's going to look crazy. It's going to look like you're falling sometime. But if we see, this is, I have to go here. And matter of fact, while I'm going there, get your word and we're going back to Corinthians, but we're going to the first chapter of Corinthians. Um, I mean, the first Corinthians, first chapter, and we're only going to be looking at about five verses tonight. Um, 26 through 31, that's first Corinthians, first chapter, 26 through 31. But um, as I was saying, God allows these things to happen um, just so that the um many can come at and look and be just in, in, in you know you know people are nosy i gotta say it like that uh, they love entertainment so when they see in this god has a way god has a way of just allowing people to be so interested in your in what they think is going to be your downfall and so as they are looking and lurking god will allow the human side of people to be so interested that what ends up happening at the very last second, like I was saying, God will bust you out with a victory. So as you're looking and you're going through your circumstances, see, this is this is where I was going. Thank you, Lord. Uh, what the world is expecting you to fall, the difference between the world and the body of Christ and those that's inside the body of Christ, um, the world is operated by the world standards. So when they see more and more pressure coming on you, they're only expecting you to fall. But the difference of walking in the spirit and walking in the spirit of God, um, because there's a lot of spirits out here. But when I'm saying you walking in the spirit of God, you have to stay connected to the Lord by the spirit. How do, what do I mean being connected by the spirit? Um, you have to stay in his word. You have to constantly communicate with him so that uh, your spirit will be strengthening on the victories that God has already brought others through. Your spirit will be already strengthened by talking to the connector, talking to the to, to the source, your power source, talking to the Lord so that he can consistently uh, have you understand that it's not by sight that we walk, but we walk by faith. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. So when, the more you spend time with God, he'll remind you that I don't care how bad it looks. He's going to bring you through. So now what you have to do when you're in circumstances like that, um, you know, a lot of times people that come at you with a word of advice, those advice don't always mean that it's from God. So what you have to do is put yourself in God's word. Um, you have to wrap yourself in God's word. You have to put yourself on purpose around people that's going to speak godly things into you. Because if not, like I said before, you have the world system that when pressure comes, 99.9% .9 of the time, they're going to stress out and fall. You have the spirit of God. And when the stress comes, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to walk in victory. The only percent of where you may fall is if you choose to walk out of the body of Christ, walk away from God and go to the world system. There is no in between. Please get that. Too often, many in the body of Christ are still trying to operate in the world system, still trying to operate worldly and come out with a godly victory. It's not possible. You cannot put, uh, if you're looking to make Kool-Aid, you cannot put soda in a, in a jug and, and stir it up with, 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 with sugar and expect to get it a taste of Kool-Aid. So you cannot put, uh, world stuff in your body um come up with their logic please follow me come up with their logic and expect to come out with a godly victory it's not going to work so how do we get god's victory please turn with me again to first corinthians first chapter 26 through 31 the only way we're going to get god's victory the only way we're going to be victorious is we really have to renew our mind and now we have to be bold enough. Here we go. Here we go. We got to be bold enough to turn away from all of the street smart. All of the however many years we've been here. Watching all the things that many people have done on TV to get ahead. Watch all the things that the news say to get ahead. Watch all of the, We have to erase or put that under our feet to the point that now the only thing that we're willing and going 
to operate by is the word of God. Notice I said at the Call beginning. One, two, five, two, four, apologize eight, for that. One, four, six, three, Somebody's three. trying to call me, which is probably not even a real person. But um, the only way we're going to be able to walk this thing out, we have to renew our mind with the word of God. Again, 1 Corinthians 1st chapter 26 through 31. I posted on Facebook recently, and I'm paraphrasing because I can't say 100% that I'm belong, um, say what I posted. I think I posted it yesterday that um, whomever you listen to the most is whom you're going to follow. And God had gave me that because in the, in the post I put that Adam was doing great until he started spending more time with Eve than he did God. And we know the outcome of that. Eve challenged him with God's word. And he, uh, Adam chose to follow his wife because the serpent came to Eve and confused her. But God didn't give the instruction to Eve. God gave the instruction to Adam. So Adam, of all people, should have known. But what happened is Adam stopped communicating as much with God. And started spending more time listening and communicating with Eve. So when the serpent came to Eve, instead of Adam, notice he didn't come to Adam. Because Adam already heard it straight from God. The, the serpent came to Eve, got her all confused off what Adam had told her. Adam came, and she came back to Adam. And because Adam had not been spending as much time with God as he was, and spending more time with Eve, he followed what Eve said. Well, guess what? It's the same exact thing. If we spend more time following the world system, when God tells you to do it a certain way, or when you run into a circumstance and there was time to apply God's word, we will fall and crumble and follow the world's way. That's why so many Christians are stressed out. That's why so many Christians right now are living beneath what what God has intended for us to walk in. God has given us the authority. Remember, and I got, uh, uh, this is just coming out. God gave Adam the authority to name all the animals. God gave uh, Adam all uh, the authority to have dominion over everything. So guess what? You and I are like Adam. God still gave us the ability to have dominion over these things. How do we have dominion after the sin of Adam? How do we have dominion? By the body of Christ. With the Holy Spirit, you and I have dominion to bind and to loose. We can bind, um, um, we can bind coronavirus from coming into our household. Uh, we can bind <coughs> any demonic attack that's coming. We can do that. God has given us the authority. But now we have to understand that we cannot walk partial world and stress out and then walk partial God and expect to have total victory. I got to say it again. We can't walk 50% world, 50% God and expect to get total victory. You have to be something that one of my old bishops at the time, Pastor A.G. Mullen, said, you, the first time I had ever heard it in my life, you got to be sold out. I didn't even understand what the term was. But since he said that over 20 years ago, I've understood that soul out means I leave the world's way of doing things and completely be focused on God's way of doing things. Good evening. The only way that's going to happen is you have to renew your mind. It's not going to make sense to those that you've always hung with. It's not going to make sense to your relatives unless they too are sold out. The victory comes in being sold out. The victory comes in being, I'm going to do it your way, God. I'm going to speak your word over the circumstance. I'm going to believe in what you, the way you said it. And I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what the news say. I don't care what nobody else says. I'm going to walk in what you said, God. That's being sold out. And not only giving it lip service, but you must also believe it. Now, I will say... Um, it starts with levels. I will say that, but the more you speak it, the more you believe it because you're hearing them. faith comes by, 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 hold on. 
by hearing the word of God. And I know I paraphrased that a little bit. I was trying to remember exactly right. But anyway, by hearing the word of God. So if you're speaking it out loud, you're also hearing it. And it goes more to settle you down. Just like, man, it's just like on the flip side of that, on the, or the world side of doing it, the flesh side. If you say, man, I'm having a horrible day. Man, I'm having a real bad day. Well, guess what? It's not going to take too many times of you saying how bad of your day is that you're going to start believing you're having a bad day. And you're going to start maneuvering as if you're having a bad day. But on the flip side, if you wake up and say, man, I just feel it. It's going to be a great day today. Oh, man, it's going to be a great day. Well, guess what? By the time you walk out of the house, you just skip it along because you just know today is going to be the awesome day. Well, guess where it came from? It came from you speaking it. And you heard it. And the more you spoke it, you heard it. You spoke it. You heard it. And then you believed it. So it's the same thing. That's how we walk away from the world's way of doing things because we heard the world's way of doing things for so long that we believed it. Just like we hear on almost every news channel about uh, the fear of the pandemic, the fear of this, the fear of the job loss, the fear. Of, but if you are believing in Jesus Christ, then you must understand that's not our system. Our system resides in this word of God. And just like we learn the laws of man, we'll understand the ways of God, and that's our system to operate. Again, we're going from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, 26 through 31st verses. I mean, 31st verses. So understand me when I say that. No, I'm not beating you over the head. I'm not beating me over the head. I'm giving us reminders and things to work towards because God really is intending on us and is expecting us to walk it out his way. He's inspecting us as his children to follow his lead. Just like parents, when you give your kids instructions, you are expecting your kids to follow his, their, your instructions. God is expecting us as his children to follow his instructions. So guess what? That means, again, we must shut the world system off to our ears and put the word of God in our ears and speak it out of our mouth. So anyway... Going to 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, 26 through 31st verses, it reads as follows. It says, brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many, this is out the Good News Bible, by the way. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were noble birth. Not many were of noble birth, 27. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. 28. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. 29. So that no one may boast before him. 30. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus. Who has become for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. 31. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for our opportunity once again for your word to be preached, taught to your people. God, we thank you, Lord, for choosing each and every one of us, God, to speak through. God, right now, I'm asking God, because you set this up, speak through me, God, so that all of us can be fed. And Father, give us tools that we can hang on, rely on, and live by. God, we know that your word is true. We know that, Father, there's victory in following it your way. God, strengthen us. Give us a, a, a fresh hunger, God, for, for you and the things of you, not material things, but literally God seeking the spiritual things that you provide. God, thank you for the spiritual success and the spiritual victories, God, of just seeking your face. God, I thank you, God, for giving us gifts, God, that only you can nurture and mature and you allow us to use and bring about your place and your victory on this earth. God, we thank you, God, for all that you've done all that you're doing, God, and all that you will do, God. You have promised us the victory. You have promised us 
in your word. And so, God, we believe that regardless of what's going on around us, regardless of what may be, may be happening in our neighborhood, regardless of what may happen in our families, God, you have promised us the victory. And it's by faith, God. It is by faith that we receive this. It is by faith that we connect with you. It is by faith that we move in you. So, God, it is by faith that we believe in you and the things of you. It is according to our faith. So, God, I thank you, God, for being there to take us over, to take us through, and to bring us through to the victorious life, God, of where we just reside and lean on you. God, we thank you that it's not in our strength, it's not in our ability, but it's about in operating in your God omniscient omnipotent power, all-powerful, it's, it's about operating in what you are, God. Not in our strength, not in our ability, but operating in you. Thank you, Father, for I can do, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So thank you, God, for your word and your promises. Speak again on tonight. Make it so clear that even the youngest of youngest that may see this video may understand God, deposit seeds in us, God, that you will bring about an increase on your time. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Going back to verse 26. Again, if you're just tuning in, this is 1 Corinthians, um, first chapter, 26 through 31. And we're just going to be looking at the things of God. If, if I had to come up with a title, you know, if you really want to have something to look by or, or look for it later, um, just look at God's calling. God's calling on us. God's calling to us. There you go. We'll go by that one. God's calling to us. So anyway, verse 26 says, brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. Verse 26 says something. If you go back and you look at it, and we're looking at the things of God, I want you to understand the humongous difference in the world's way of looking at things and God's way of looking at things. The more we see the major difference, the more we understand why we need to walk by the Spirit of God and stop trying to operate so much on our street smarts, our um, years of earthly living. Because when you do that, and I'm going to say this, when you go by your years of earthly living, uh, the world system of doing things, we tend to shut God out and limit God. Well, when you, what do I mean? Well, 96% of people that diagnose with this die. So that must mean mm -mm, that ain't got nothing to do with you. I Many of you know that I was diagnosed with uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer many years back. Doctors diagnosed it. Notice that I said I doctors diagnosed it. I never attached myself to it because it never belonged to me. If I am in the body of Christ, if I got the blood of Jesus in me, then if that's what I believe, which I do, then. That can't attach to me because it never attached to Jesus. So every time, even when I still go to a follow-up and they want to check me out, and they try to get me to say your C word, I don't even read it. Matter of fact, when they say it to me, I speak it out loud mass majority of the time. That ain't mine. Because it has to be rebuked. It cannot attach itself to me. It's illegal as... Pastor Carl Walker says, it's illegal. So therefore, the only way it can attach itself to me is if I receive it. Please understand, I don't care what the doctor said, it's not yours. If you are a child of God, it does not belong to you. You cannot have it unless you reach out and receive it by your words. Amen? Please get it. So anyway, looking at verse 26, it says, brothers, think... Think of what you were when you were called. When you were called by God, first of all, come out of coming out of the womb. Uh, you were created for a purpose. Every last one of us that is created by God was created for a purpose. Now, when you accepted a call, is 
when you began to line up with what God had called you to do. So understand this, when God called you, you may have been born into some, some, some crazy situations. Growing up, you may have experienced some of the craziest stuff. I mean, stuff that you may still have a hard time talking about. Many people have experienced things that are severely, could have been, could have been severely damaging to your mindset. But because of Jesus Christ. Now, please understand, when you became a part of the body of Christ, uh, I want you to remember, as you've heard or read the word of God, did you ever find a plague attached to Jesus Christ? Did you ever find a sickness attached to Jesus Christ? Did you ever find a sin attached to Jesus Christ? I don't know what book you read, but mine says no to every one of those questions. So now if I am in the body of Jesus Christ, if he was never attached and I'm in his body, I can't be attached. It's just like Mamas, when you were pregnant and you carried your child, if you didn't have a problem, the child didn't have a problem. If you won't sick, the child won't sick. So as being in the body of Jesus Christ, if Jesus was never attached to any kind of sickness, illness, or diseases, then I can't be attached, which means I don't have to receive what the devil sends to me. Please follow what I'm saying. Because I know somebody may have gotten caught up and said, wait a minute, but they diagnosed me. It's up to you to receive it. By faith, if you begin to speak the right stuff and line your, th your, your thought process up with the will of God, ask God to give you wisdom on how to take care of yourself, then what's going to end up happening, your body will follow suit to match your words because we have power in the tongue. Going back, Jesus spoke the world into existence. Uh, God spoke the world into existence. God the Father, God the Son, God the uh, Holy Spirit, they one. God spoke the world into existence. We have the Holy Spirit, which is, I like to call it like a cell phone from God. But we have the Holy Spirit, which is God's Spirit in us. So again, I'm saying and I'm giving all that a breakdown only just to say that we have God on the inside. We have Jesus Christ on the inside. We have the Holy Spirit on the inside. So if nothing was attached to Jesus when he walked this earth, then guess what? We are in his body, so we don't have to receive it. If you receive it, it's yours. Just like I've said several times, if I come to you and I give you a brand new car, and I hold the keys and hold the keys and I hold the keys and I hold the keys in my hand, and if you never take your hand and reach out and grab them keys, then it's never yours. So I can hold this thing all day long, but if you don't ever get to come up here and grab it, then it's still mine. So guess what? When the devil tries to bring you a sin or try to bring you a curse or try to bring you a sickness, it's not yours until you reach out and grab it. So if you never grab it, it ain't yours. So anyway, going back again to 26, um, if you go back and you remember where you were, um, you may have been the least likely as world system, world standing that God will use. Because maybe you didn't have all of this and have all of that. Maybe it didn't, you know, the, the intellectuals didn't come out of your family. God didn't care not one bit. Because what God likes, remember he said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. What God likes to choose, the ones that has been counseled out, the ones that everybody else think that, man, ain't never be nothing. Those are the ones that God's going to go back and make sure that Upon our uh, humility, God will use because it's still our choice. It's still our choice. But God likes to use the ones that say, man, she'll never be nothing. That girl been clubbing all her life. Look at all them kids she got and all that the debt she got and all that. Man, he been locked up 25 years, man. He, mm -mm. That's the one God's going to go back because he said, if I'll be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. See, what happens is God like to choose those because people will know for a fact it ain't them. And people say, man, he's been drunk all his life. Then all of a sudden God delivers you from the taste of alcohol and you don't even want to do none of that no more. People know for a fact that won't you. You ain't putting on. You ain't uh, 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 acting. It's truly God. 
people understand that. So when you look at verse 26 and it's talking about, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many of you were influential. Not many were of a noble birth. Verse 27 says, but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. See, God chose you just like we're talking about because God likes to make sure that I don't care how many. Mm, I have met people and I'm not even going to stay all this long. I have met people that tried to downgrade me because they may have had more plaques on the wall. God don't care anything about the plaques on your wall. God does care about what's in your spirit. So you can go all your life with tons of plaques, tons of degrees. But if you never give your heart to the Lord, guess where you're going? After you take your last breath. So I say to you, don't worry about that. But you go back to, you go back to, it said, but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. So while people are saying, you know, I have all these different degrees, surely God will choose me. God ain't really all that interested in that because if your heart is on your riches, God can't use you. See, God got to have a place in order to step into it. I say it again. God got to have a vacancy in order to be in your heart. It got to be something in your heart that's vacant in order for him to have room to come in. So if your heart is full of your riches, your mind is on your, 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 all your accomplishments that you have assigned to yourself, then you ain't left room for God to come in. So anyway, it's okay if you ain't got all the finest things. God ain't interested in that. God will choose you because your mind is not on your riches. God will choose you just to show people that, uh-huh, now look how I blessed her when she didn't have. Now look at where she at because she gave her life to me. Fast forward 30, 40 years from where you knew her, and you'll see that she got, like Solomon, one of the wealthiest people, which please understand, I am not saying that every child of God is going to have mansions here on earth and find the job to find his cars. But guess what? When you have God on the inside, you can take that uh, uh, acre of land or half an acre of land that you got and be just as happy and praise God and be debt free. Versus the person that got 25 acres, I got a house with 65 rooms and in, in so much debt that they have absolutely no peace. It is not about material things. Please get that. It is not about material things. God will give a person that does not have many things the peace of God and the anointing will be so strong on their life versus the person that came with everything, as they said, born in a noble family, and God can't even reach them because they're too high-minded. So anyway, verse 27, God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He ain't interested in your clout. He ain't interested in your level in society. He will choose whomever he chooses. And please, once God, you realize God has called you and you don't see things like the world see it, don't allow the world to shame you. You know, I went through many years of people telling me how different I was that, that eventually, let, let, me, let me say this, because this is going to help somebody. I went through so many years of, of being attacked as a youngster that people couldn't stand my guts and I didn't understand why. I went through many years of people trying to jump me and jumping me that I did nothing wrong. But let me tell y'all something because some of you may see this video. Thank you. I thank you for what you did to me when I was young. You know why I thank you? Because you freed me from caring the least bit about what the next man got to think about me. Please understand, thank you. So please, when you're watching this video, some of you all have gone through the same situations where you have, you have done everything you can to please people and they still not happy. It's okay. That's God's design. Because as soon as you can get to the point where you do not care, if they approve of your walk in Jesus Christ, then God can truly use you. Once you're not caring anymore about keeping up with society, then that leaves you room for God to work in your life. So please enjoy being different.
As long as you're being different for God. As long as you're being different and you know you're being led by the Holy Spirit. It's okay to follow God's word. It's going to make you different. Please be rid of people and their approval or disapproval. Please get rid of that. Because as long as they can pull your strings, they will control you. And you're not giving God the strings to control. Amen? Amen. All right. Verse 28 says, He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. What does that mean? Going back, it says 28, and he chose the lowly things of this world. Uh, the things that people say, man, she's so shy. She just let anybody walk over her. Now, I'm not, I'm not advocating for you to just sit back and let people just uh, uh, walk over top of you. No, it's okay to speak up for yourself. But now, God did not call us to be disrespectful, busting people side the head, stuff like that. No, no. You know what I'm saying? And if that's an environment you, you are in, you may, people might say, hey, guess what, man? She's just, man. But God choose people like that that already knows how to practice humility. Everything does not deserve a response. Please understand. It took me years. Every time somebody say something to you to try to destroy your name does not need a response. Let them talk. It's all right. Let them go ahead. Because those who really matters already knows what kind of character you have. Those who really matter already know what goal you're working towards in life. So you don't have to go it up and defend your name because somebody says something bad about you. Let them talk. It's okay. Go right ahead. Talk away. So anyway, God chooses, he chooses the lowly things of this world and, despi and the despised things the ones that people don't like being around because you just can't understand them. Maybe you can't understand them because, and I'm not talking about you, but maybe people can't understand you because you're not of the world. Preferably, that's it. And the things that are not, okay, and, 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 okay. And he chose the lowly things of this world and despised things. And the things that are not, to nullify the things that are. So now, the world has a system that says this is the right way of doing things. But then God has a system that's in mass majority of cases does not agree with the world system. So they're trying to figure out why you're doing it this way. When are you going to do it that way? When are you going to see, yeah, y'all go again, talking about we shouldn't do it this way and that way and this, this, and that. And I'm so tired of hearing about where the Bible said. Listen. You stick to what the Bible says. Because I say another post. I used to try to follow the masses until I realized where the masses is going. The masses is going to, going to, go, to, going to go to hell. I'm not trying to follow the masses no more. When God called, turned on the green light, turned on the, 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 the flashlight, and I started seeing the spiritual side, and I started realizing that the world, for the most part, has no desire to follow God's way, then I realize I can't follow y'all. I don't care what you all agree on. I don't care what you all decide. If it goes against God's word, I'm not with you. I can't do it. I don't care how many people do whatever. I'm not with you. I'm not with you. Don't even look for me to be with you. That's how you got to do it. So it says here in verse 29, so that no one may boast before him. See, God does these things where he uses those that everybody else shun, like I said before, so that he can get the glory out of it. Because if he, if you came and let, let's paint a picture. If you was brought up in a rich family, you drove the finest cars, you drove the, uh, went to the finest schools, wore the finest claw, uh, clothes, um, then you're going to feel like, you know, somebody who doesn't have that will say, man, God is not going to pay any attention to me. Uh, I might as well just give it up because I don't, I, I, I'm not, you know, it's back in the day, the Kennedys, you know, I'm, I'm not a Kennedy, you know, I'm, I'm not a, 
I'm I'm not a a, a Jackson Jackson. Fan. I'm I'm not one of them. Uh, I, I'm not. God's not going to use me. No, that's a lie. That's why God chooses those that He chooses. In most cases, you may be the only one out of your family that that um not drinking, not 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 drunk all the time. You may be the only one that decides. Man, I, I just don't want to cuss anybody out. I just, that's not just what I want to do. And they're getting there, feel me, just because you are one of the ones that do cuss all the time, God can still use you too. And one day it'd be like, man, I, you know what? I don't even want to stop cussing. God will choose whomsoever, it says in the word, whomsoever will let him come. Whomever who's willing to let God in, God will use Amen. It's not qualifications. You don't have to have qualifications no more than just let him in. If you're willing to let him in and let him take control and clean you up, he'll do it. Amen. So verse 30 says, as soon as I find it, it is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? It's because of God that we are in Christ Jesus. God chose us. Who has become for us wisdom of God. Jesus became the wisdom show. Can you imagine how confusing being a child of God would be if Jesus never came to this earth? But Jesus came and he became an a awesome example of how we should live. Even as we study his word, we see how he maneuvered in situations. Even when those were against him, we see how he maneuvered. Him knowing the outcome. So you and I don't even be knowing the outcome of a situation. you know. But when we understand that he knew the outcome... Uh, then we can trust his process. So, you know, but Jesus knew the outcome and still allowed people to walk over him, as what the world would say. Because they say, man, look at him. He's hanging up on the cross. And now we got him. He did all this for everybody else, but now he can't outpower us, not understanding that Jesus already had that plan. God already had that as part of the plan. So Jesus, in his, humili in his humility, allowed it to happen. So again, Looking at all of that, and when you see it says um, 30, it is because of him that you are in Christ. God chose us. Who has become for us wisdom of God. Jesus became the wisdom of God by the, the way he maneuvered on this earth. That is, he became our righteous. Through him, we, got, we become righteous. Through him, we become righteous. Through him, we become holiness. Through him only. And through him, we have redemption. The way that verse is read, if you're just joining me, it says verse 30. It says, um, it is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. It is because of Jesus Christ that you and I got any hope. It is because of Jesus Christ that we have any of this. Now, it is according to your faith. And that's why I keep saying that, because if you don't believe this work, it's not going to work for you. I, and that's the best way I can. If you don't believe in God's protection for you, then it will not work for you. Because I don't care how many times he protects you, you're not going to see it that way. You're going to see that you did it. You're going to believe that that Glock that you carry on your side and in every room is your protector. You're going to believe that. You're going to believe that the 25 Rockwallers and the 25 gun cases and your smart is what got you protected. No. No. It's God's protection. It's God that keeps us protected. It's his angels that he has already assigned to protect us. It is God who protects us. Please understand, if you're a child of God, it is not your wisdom that has kept your house safe. It is not your wisdom that has kept you safe as you travel from A to B and as you close your eyes. It is not your wisdom that keeps you and your household protected while all of you are sound asleep and defenseless. You're not defenseless in Christ. He has angels protecting you and walking your grounds and standing at your doorway and standing close by. The enemy can't get to you. But it's according to your faith. So that is why the devil is always trying to put up so many messages to, let, to make you think... To make you think you are defenseless. You have to pour in more of God's word than the enemy. You have to pour it in. And please understand, it is according to your faith. 
So while you're believing, if you believe, oh, man, my brother said something, Calvin. I have to say this. My brother said something a couple weeks ago, and I may have said it in the last video, that just so profound to me. And I told him, he said that I'm not worried about this pandemic. He said, I believe, and I may be paraphrasing, I wish he was on to type it or say it again. He said that the higher the numbers of um, the pandemic, then that means the higher protection God has over me. And I had to think about that thing because when you truly believe that God has you protected, that I don't care how to high the tide of the, the ocean gets. I don't care how high the crime rate gets. I don't care how bad the famine is. God, that means God is going to be that much more of your supplier. And that's what we have to walk in, understanding that by being in the body of Christ, he has us protected. That's the things as we put on Christ, as we constantly die daily to the flesh, die daily to the world system, and we pick up the, the body of Christ, we pick up the things of God, we pick up the, the, the knowledge of God, then we can walk in it. And I mean, I never, I will never forget that, that analogy. I will never forget it because some of us will panic because we see the news. But understand that God has already been there, done that, and he has already supplied more than enough protection for you. He's already, because he walks in abundance. That's our God. He's abundant. He's everything. So we don't have to worry. Just follow the rules and regulations. And listen, just because you may live in a state that says, now we can go 100%. I mean, the Holy Spirit's going to still lead you. Is the Holy Spirit still going to lead you in your circumstances? Amen. And I'll leave it at that. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen. So going to the last verse, it says, Therefore, as it is written, let him who boast, boast in the Lord. Understand me that it is not your great appeal. It is not your great looks. It's not even from the great family that you came from. It is only from the body of Christ that we will succeed. It is only because of the blood of Jesus Christ that is now running through our veins. Listen, when we became a new creature, you got to take this thing all away. You got to take it all away. And I don't care how many people call you crazy and say, hey, oh yeah, yeah, that was my old bloodline. Yeah, my new bloodline got Jesus Christ in it. They can look at you strange if you want to, but no, it's according to your faith. You can't walk in victory with a little bit of faith and say, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, great-grandma did have that disease. Grandma did have it too. No. Take that thing literally. Yeah, I, that's right. Yeah, my big brother, Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, I'm covered. You take that literally. Take it. Because that's who we are. We are warriors on a mission. And as warriors, we walk like God. There is no greater warrior than Jesus Christ. I, I don't find, I don't find, I have not found one passage where Jesus punched anybody. But he had all power. And he walked by the spirit. So guess what? You and I, we are victorious because we move by the spirit. The Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is what keeps us connected and keeps us all powerful in Him. So listen to me when I say to you, and we're about to go to a close. God has a purpose for you. If you're willing to let Him in and you're willing to, to submit to His will, you haven't begun to live. You haven't begun to receive the peace of God. So many of us have chased many years peace, but we've chased it the world's way. And then the problem with the world's way, it only lasts for a couple of seconds or overnight 
or whatever. And then you got your reality standing back in your face again. But when you, when you do it God's way, it don't make a difference of what kind of situation or circumstance you are in. You can rest in Jesus' peace. So today, I am still putting on more of his peace. Every day. That's why I say we have to die daily. We have to die daily to all the stuff that we watched on the news yesterday. We have to die daily to all the stuff that we heard this morning. All the stuff that we saw on the news this morning. All the stuff that we scrolled and saw on our phone that was negative, ungodly. We got to die to that. Every day, die daily. And we, we, we live by the things of God. So that means we got to eat the word of God. We got to eat and meditate with God. We got to talk with God, spend time with God and die daily. That's a continual process. That's why the journey of becoming, uh, walking in holiness, it's a journey. Walking in it. Getting rid of bad habits. It's a consistent process. Because the devil, listen, and I'm going to say this and we're going to close. Back when I was young, the younger days, I, I remember people would say, man, I ain't, I, I mean, I ain't ready to get saved. Man, I ain't ready to stop. I ain't ready to stop clubbing. I, I, ain't, I ain't ready to stop drinking. I, I ain't ready to stop running women. I ain't ready to stop running men. I ain't ready to. Listen, God just needs you to be willing to let him in. He will do the change. All of a sudden, you just don't see a point in staying up all night, clubbing from one club to the next, spending all your money that you done work enslaved for, for five days or uh, two weeks just to throw it up in one night. It just won't make sense to you no more. God did the change. It won't make sense to no more to trying to find a bottle of every beverage that's got alcohol written on it. It won't make sense anymore. That's God changing. That's him changing you. So all I'm saying to you is, if you let him in, he'll do the change. Stop worrying about the pressure of being perfect. Can't happen. Listen, let me say something. And at this season that we're going through right now in the news, this is something perfect for somebody. There's not one child of God that we can walk in perfection. On our own strength. That's why when you go back up. It says that we put on his righteousness. And his holiness. Because in our own strength. We can't do it. So please y'all. Please stop thinking that every Christian that you see is perfect. Please. Take that yoke off. You'll never be perfect. In your own strength. That's why we need his grace and his mercy. That's why we need God's grace and mercy. That's why we need his forgiveness. Because you are not perfect. We are not perfect in our own strength. Only if we're wrapped in the blood of Jesus are we perfect. Amen. So let's go to a close now. Um, I pray that this, you, you, you receive something out of this. I pray that it, 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 it strengthen your, uh, your walk in the Lord. It strengthen your spirit. Um, all I can say is, is, you know, I just thank God for his patience uh, with me. Um, and, and I can only speak for me. I just I just thank him because, you know, I, I don't care how hard I fight. There still is going to be God's going to show me there's another era, another area. And, and, and I can only be thankful when he shows me there's another area that needs work, because if he didn't care, he wouldn't show it to me. If I didn't belong to him, he wouldn't show it to me. If I was already Satan's kid, everything would be great. It wouldn't be no need to, to do anything other than what my flesh wants. But because God shows me that I need work in another area, in another area, in another area, in another area, it lets me know that he's still working on me. He's still molding me. He's still shaping me, which means he's still paying attention to me. Now, I don't ever want that to stop. Thank you, Lord. So let's close with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word on tonight. Again, God, I pray that you will allow it to go to the ones that you have assigned this video to, 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 uh, for them to watch. God, I speak, God, uh, on the behalf of the body of Christ, God, that we just thank you. Thank you for just loving us 
unconditionally. Thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for not killing us in our flaws with our little nasty selves. Because you said even on our best day, we like filthy rags. Thank you that you still love these little filthy rags. Thank you that you allowed us to be wonderful in you. Thank you for all of that. Thank you for never turning your back on us. Thank you for just loving us, protecting us, and giving us a great promise. At the end of our days, in our middle of our days, and at the beginning of our days, we have purpose. Thank you, God, that one day we're going to return to reign and rule with you. Thank you for that kind of promise. We win at all sides. So thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, and thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't thank you enough. So we love you, Father, and we thank you again. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You all have a great day. And again, as I say, go back into this word and spend some more time because God may give you more things than he gave through me. And also, I am on YouTube. T uh, type in Minister Tyrese Barnes. You will find my uh, YouTube channel, uh, Worries on a Mission. And prayerfully, that will help you grow in, in the Lord. Um, I'm just here to, to allow God to do whatever he created me for. That's the only thing I'm here for. That's my own purpose. So, you know, um, y'all just enjoy your journey. Enjoy your journey with the Lord. Be submissive to his will. And watch God take you to places that you never could dream of. You know, I said this, and I, again, I was talking to my brother, and I realized something, you know, the people that we looked up to growing up, a lot of them have gone on home now. And what I have realized is that God has, we're now in that generation. Um, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to close. I realized something that the way God has done this as the body of Christ, and this is just the way I've seen it, um, you know, at the beginning was Adam and Eve and they was walking with God and, and then the fall of man. And it seemed like from from that portion throughout all the generations, the 42 generations to Jesus and all the generations after Jesus. And God's whole purpose has been getting man back to him from the fall of Adam to all the way to this particular generation that you're in. God has been bringing the body of Christ back to him. So after us. He's still going to be bringing the body even closer to look like him. So we're just a part of the body and just the steam of things of what God is doing. So be encouraged and again, walk in him because he has a purpose for you that only you can do for your lifetime. And so be willing to let God do what he do. Amen. I love y'all and I'll see you next week or unless God says for me to do it sooner. Have a great night.